dun, dun, dun. What if we're solving these linear differential equations and we have initial conditions? We are first going to let our y be e to the rt so that we can take derivatives and throw them into our differential equation. So we can see that we have to pull out our e to the rt, but since e to the rt is never equal to zero, we're just going to have our characteristic equation, or r squared plus 1. That factors into r plus i and r minus i. If you don't believe in, if you don't believe in factoring, then use quadratic formula. And you'll find that you are going to be 0 plus or minus i. So my real part is 1 and my imaginary part is 1. Or my real part is 0 my imaginary part is 1. So if we throw that into our general form for our solution, we'll see that we have c1 cosine t, c2 sine t, because e to the 0 is 1. Then our solutions of this form. And we can use our initial conditions now. Let's take this one first. Since y of pi over 3 is 2, then 2 is equal to c2 cosine pi over 3 plus c2 sine pi over 3. Then your lack of trig skills kicks in. But you go ahead and you evaluate those two, and the cosine of pi over 3 is half, and the cosine of... And the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. That's our first equation. Now we've got to go get a derivative. So we take the derivative of the general solution, and we get that guy. Then we evaluate it when our y is minus 4, and our t is pi over 3. So now that we have our system, let's go solve it. So that was my first equation, and my second equation. To solve this system, I want to first put it into standard form. Yeah. I'm stacking them on top of each other, and I'm multiplying both of them by 2 to get rid of those fractions. One less thing to worry about. And now that we've got that, I got a new 1, and I got a new 2. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use substitution. I'm solving 1 for C1. Now I'm plugging it into 2. Everywhere I see a C1, I put that guy, a 4 minus root 3 C2. We distribute in, and we clean up. Sure. Okay, so here I see I have 3 C2 and 1 C2. I'm going to go ahead and write them together as 4 C2. And then what? Now, I solve for C2. I add that 4 root 3, and then I divide everything by 4, and I see I got a C2. Let's put it into C2. Whoop, make me some room. Oh, there it is. Again, distributing in. Clean it up. And we have our C1. So let's take our C2 and C1 on over here. Because what? I want to write it into our general solution. Because now we have a specific one with our initial conditions. So I plug those C1 and C2 in there. Now don't worry. I commuted that C2 just so it's easier on the eyes. And then it's all over with the box and flower. I